Today it's all about flashing a ledger board. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you what we got going on here. And this might be a temporary flashing. I may have to pull it off in the spring and redo this, but for right now I need to get this ledger board sealed uh, at least the best I can. So I'm gonna show you what I got going on right now. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Dirdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's take a look at what we got going and I'll explain a few things to you. So what I got going here, I got a line snapped across this wood. I'm going to cut it off right there and I will just be putting a temporary sheet of plywood in its place, CDX. I'm going to pull up that very first duck board so that I can get at the ledger. So I have some issues here that they're not really fixable unfortunately without removing this window. There's some rotten wood they never flashed this window at all and the window should have been flashed before it was installed so that water couldn't get behind but they that they didn't do that and then when they the roof that used to be here they flashed it they used this aluminum that appears to have been from a newspaper printing press of some sort from back in the early 70s is the date that I found on it and and it is a local paper it's Iosco County Michigan so it, it's kind of funny that some of the stories that we were reading on it some of it's hard to read some of it is readable so I, I've got a mess here so I'm not worried about fixing this because I'm gonna put a door in here either a glass sliding door or a French door I'm not sure which but I'm gonna put a door in here so my my huge concern is not fixing that rotten wood at this point in time but rather getting my ledger board flashed getting that dried in to the best of my ability so that I can stop any future damage and uh, just getting things put together here all of this wood on the back of the house will be replaced in the probably in the spring I'm thinking because I'm kind of running out of time here so anyway I'm gonna get this wood cut off and uh, see what we got back there start getting some things cleaned up so I'm gonna set my saw just a little lighter than an inch because I'm gonna try my best not to damage the waterproofing material that they have behind that wood because I need that Just wanted to check and make sure that my blade wasn't too deep. So I've got no cut marks in that um, weatherproofing. So I am gonna go ahead and get this cut all the way. I've got all the wood cut off. I did not cut through any of this old membrane, which is good. Let me show you what we've got going here. And I'm gonna show you what they use for flashing because it's, it's kind of cool, I think. All right, so this is the membrane that they had. It's some kind of foil over paper very very degraded I'm hopeful that I get my house wrap right up underneath the edge of it there and, and get it taped down and I think we'll be just fine for six more months or whatever before I get back to it so I got me a big mess here I'm gonna get that all cleaned up then I'm gonna pull up that duck board and I'm gonna start doing a little flashing and we'll be back to show you that but I wanted to show you this right here this is the the material that they used to flash the old roof with and it was obviously Christmas time you could still say Christmas then Christmas greetings Merry Christmas from Ace Realty all kinds of good stuff and there's some dates on here 
So it says right here, December 24th, 1975. So I know this cottage was built before 1975. And so that tells me that this roof was added on later. Probably this wood. What another thing that kind of clued me into some work that had been done here was the fact that the the block was painted behind the wood. I don't think they would have done that if they intended to cover it with wood. But I just had to show you this too because look at this. He's got a uh, 1970 hairdo going on right there, doesn't he? I know that my Aunt Lynn and my mom will be intrigued by seeing some of this and I'm hoping that all of you will also. I've got everything all cleaned up and I'm ready to get started on the splashing. But first I want to show you something. It's not very often that I remove decking screws. I quite normally put them in. And being in the middle of the pandemic, it is very hard to find decking screws sometimes. So I bought what I could get my hands on. So what I have here is a grip right decking screw. I hope it comes into focus. And its coating is been removed in a lot of spots it's very concerning and it's not just one of them it's screw after screw after screw where a lot of the coating is missing I've never been a big user of grip right screws so I've never really noticed this happen before but I mean just every one of them has a ton of the coating missing um, not not what you want it's not a good thing at all and I may have to go through and pull all these grip rights out eventually and put a different screw in what I've always liked to use is the deck mates and as you can see these are the deck mates that I removed we're missing a little bit of finish right here by this thread I don't even know if you can see it other than that there's no real finish missing on that screw this is probably the worst of the deck mates that I took out. It's missing a little finish right there on that thread. Other than that, and a little bit on those threads right there. Other than that, no finish, no finish missing. Here's the other four deck mates. Very little finish missing. So guys, if you're going to get screws, I think I recommend deck mates. So this is what we're using for our flashing. This is a membrane. It is made by Grace. It's nine inches by 33 feet, more than enough to flash everything. Um, I may do it in like six foot sections or something like that to make it a little easier for me to handle. Overlap is, is not a horrible thing. Um, so I'm gonna get this opened up and we're gonna get started. This is self-adhering. And let me go, let me say this first. Let me start over. I like to use the membrane for a few reasons. There, the aluminum can corrode. Um, it can corrode, it can break through, it becomes weak where you break it, it adds strength but it also can become weak in those points. It's just dependent on how far you break it and what you do with it. Um, and it does not seal around screws, nails, or staples that may go through it. There is no seal. That's why I like to use the membrane. The membrane will seal back around a screw or a nail or a staple or anything that may go through this membrane. It'll seal back around it and keep the water out. These membranes last a long time. And for the money, I think this was 20 bucks. For the money, you can't beat it. I'm gonna get this opened up and get some laid out and show you what's going on. Here's what we've got. I've cut off about seven feet here of the membrane and I'm gonna peel the backing and start getting it stuck on. So what I want to do is I want to come out about three quarters of an inch onto the joist and then I'll cut it in the corners so that I can fold it down over the face of the ledger board and then a little bit will be out over the joist. I'm not necessarily trying to seal the joist from water going in but if it keeps some out, then that's great. The more water you can keep out of a joint, the better off that you are. So let's get some of this backing off and get this thing getting stuck down.
So I'm going to turn it over and I'm not going to pull all the backing. I'm just going to pull a little bit just so I can get it started. And then I'll pull more backing as, as I go, as I get it where I want it. Otherwise it'll just try to stick to everything and then you'll have a nightmare on your hands. I have a couple inches of the adhesive exposed and we're going to get rolling here. I'm going to start at this end right down here. Just going to kind of slide it over the edge a little bit. Hold this back. And I'm just going to give it a little turn right here. And I'm going to go at about three quarters of an inch. Now I'm just going to work my way down, pull it tight, and do the same thing. So right now my main concern is just to get this stuck into place and not the wrong place. and will stick to itself so you have to be you have to be kind of careful when you're laying this out that that doesn't happen if it gets if you're not perfectly straight and it gets a little wrinkle in it or something that's no big deal but like this when it's if it gets stuck to itself Okay, now I'm going to just kind of go through, hold it up a little bit, and get it stuck to the ledger board. Ooh, that's a close-up. Now that we're stuck to the ledger board, I'm going to just pull the backing off nice and slow. In, in a lot of cases, you won't have the same issue that I have because this will all be flush, so it would just come right up the wall. I have this little indent that I need to get it to stick into. I don't want it to bridge over that. So I'm going to use this putty knife to push it in there right where I want it to be, tight against that edge. Just like that. Just pulling back a little bit of backing at a time so I can get it stuck right where I want it. And then I'll walk it up that edge the same way. A little bit of backing at a time. Walk it up the edge.
So under here, I, I don't have a board sitting on the on this, so I'm not worried about it ripping. So I really don't need to get it real super tight in the corner like I would like to down here at the bottom. So I'll use my finger and just kind of push it up and get it stuck on there. Primarily in place, I'm going to go ahead and pull all the backing. And then just lift it to where I need it. Up here. couple wrinkles through here I'm not super worried about it get you in here a little closer so you can see just what I've got going on all right so what I want to do now is just from the ledger board out is basically cut this membrane along these joists so where it's kind of stuck to itself right here, I'm going to try and free it the best I can. Cut it and cut it, and then I'm going to lay this down over the top of the ledger board. Just like that. So then I'll do that all the way along through here. I got a couple little spots here that are, but the nice thing is that this is kind of stretchy. So I'll go through and push that in a little bit better where it's not perfect. Most of it's really good, just this little spot right here. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll get this the rest of the way on and then we'll come back and we'll get some house wrap on here show you how we're going to do that and we'll get this sealed up i finished flashing the ledger board and i'll show you what i got going on here i want to go ahead and get this house wrap on it's a little windy today it's kind of beating me up on this old stuff so i want to get it secured before it gets to where it's not even useful so let me show you what we got so we'll just start down here it's all folded over, laid in real nice. I've got a couple little wrinkles here and there, no big deal, no problems. Anywhere that you have a seam, like you've doubled two boards together or something like that, like I've done here, right down here, you kind of want to cover that seam up to keep the moisture from going in between them. In the same place anywhere else, if you double up a joist or something like that, it's always a good idea to cover over that so that water doesn't get between them and get trapped in there and, and cause rot. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this house wrap on. It's very important that your house wrap lay over the top of this, just like a shingle, so that the water would flow down, flow off, and run away. And then the same thing, you know, that's why I'm trying to preserve this old stuff so that I can lay it over the top of this new house wrap and at least get this closed up for you know a few more months until I can get to it and get it fixed right
Okay, this piece is secured with just with some staples and now I'm going to go ahead and go with some house wrap tape and tape all my seams up. And uh, this stuff is pretty sticky, just about as sticky as the membrane itself. got my house wrap on I've got the old waterproof membrane whatever you want to call it pulled back down and stapled I am NOT going to try and tape it it's a little fragile I'm pretty good all the way up to um, my house wrap so I'm not real worried about it I did put a piece of membrane over the window just to stop here at the bottom to stop water from going in any more than it already has that is not how you flash a window that is just some temporary crap so I'm going to get my ducking boards back on and I'm going to cut some plywood and get this covered up I've got this all wrapped up and of course that's going to wrap us up for this week but I just want to say um, a couple things that are really important here and one is when you're putting on the house wrap make sure that the house wrap is on in the correct direction because with the outside of it out it blocks water from going in but it allows moisture to come out if you put it on backwards it will block the moisture in and it will allow the water to go in so you have to make sure your house wrap is on with the correct side facing out and then I'll show you what we got real here it's just a little temporary wrap up until spring or until I get this door it's a special order or I have to figure out what I'm gonna do so show you what we got so I just put on some half inch CDX I just have a few screws holding it nothing special just to keep it sealed up um, keep any of the other wood from getting rotten that I don't want to be rotten and a lot of it's still really good except for around this window which is going to be a door anyway so I threw a little bit of house wrap tape on there to kind of seal that off I have to put another piece on and six weeks or something that's what i'll do i'll just try to keep that sealed up and keep everything there as good as i can keep it so and and then the unclosing i just want to say that the ledger board flashing the installation of the ledger board everything about the ledger board is crucial don't skip any steps don't skimp don't you know don't do any fly by night stuff get that thing on there right get it secure pay attention to what's going on and make sure you get it sealed up real good I'd like to thank you for watching if you enjoyed yourself click on one of these two videos that are gonna pop up right here and if you would please hit that subscribe button that notification bell help me out a little bit I'd like to give a special thanks to Tony Iconelli and Brett Wimmer because none of this could happen without them